Here's a peek at what guests had to say after the show. So we are back on the internet, and Alan S. asks Jennifer, what impact do you think Michigan's recent passage of right-to-work laws will have on the state's economy in general, and especially on working people? Well, they said that it was going to create great economic boom, and uh, in fact, we've uh, lost jobs since since they adopted it. So, and what does that mean, right to work? That means that basically, right? It's anti-union. Basically, says that uh, you don't when you work in a in a shop that is represented by unions, you don't have to sign up. It was a way. It has been a way in Michigan, Wisconsin, and other states to diminish the ranks of un the union workforce. And um, I think politically, it was done to to really make sure that the unions and the working people don't have a voice as much politically either because you can't organize as well when you can't ensure that you've got um, a robust union mm -hmm. presence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I it hasn't you, done. Of course, it's Marianne. mandatory. You don't have an option whether or not you want to join a union. In Wisconsin, that was the issue. They just take the money out, and where does the money go? It goes to Democratic co campaign coffers. In Wisconsin, which is close to Michigan, they've managed to do pension reform and union pension reform, and they're, they've reduced, completely eradicated their debt, grown jobs, and have not raised taxes. Right. Yeah, yeah, they're just, they're just falling way behind Minnesota, but other than that, but that which is a good de blue but, state with Democrats. I mean, it's just an, it's an effort to take away the power of people against um, those who, who want to reduce wages and reduce pensions, et cetera. I mean, that's, that's really what it is. It's a way to reduce costs so that you don't have to pay for it. And, you know, the question is, as a nation, is that a good thing? Does it continue to exacerbate the hollowing out of the middle class? I would say it absolutely does. When you, do, you take away the voice of people from being able to organize, you diminish their power, you diminish their wages. Okay. Uh, why do Republicans and Democratic parties create rules to keep third-party candidates from debates? Oh, well, uh, let's just file that under obvious sure. reasons, shall we? No, they don't. Oh, we really, really need to answer that question? No, I, I no. Think they, the, the third party at, at the presidential level as a presidential commission and third parties do get to debate. Ross Perot yeah. certainly was there in 1992. Well, yeah, you got to pass it. you got to have 5% in the polls right. or something. Right. The reason is, is every kook in the world right. would run for president. <laughs> <laughs> Right, remember yeah. the, the rent's too damn high <laughs> guy? Remember that party? He'd, he'd be in there. I wish he was in there. He's funny. Uh, do you see any new technology on the horizon, such as artificial intelligence, that could change or influence how political campaigns are run? Wow. I don't know what that means. Yeah. How about some just normal intelligence? <laughs> what campaigns are run? No, they're not. The campaigns That's are not very run good very point. Yes. Yeah, smartly stuff. these days, Steve. Uh, okay. I'm looking. I'm looking. Mm -hmm. Steve and I know this because we do it for a living. <laughs> now uh, he runs smart campaigns. <laughs> yeah. She has a thing for like bald-headed guys. I think. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Ms. Mr. Carville, what Republican politicians do you respect? And Ms. Matlin, same question for you regarding Democratic politicians. <laughs> well, I would say some, but that would probably ruin their chances to ever win a Republican primary, you know? Well, I mean, uh, I, it's easier I guess to a lot of them that I like, but, uh, you know, we uh, could go through a whole litany of them. A lot uh, of them. You, you, I, I should like. I met Chris Christie a couple of times. He's really a kind of a nice guy to, to shoot the breeze with. I, I met all, Scott right. Walker. He's a he's a good really? guy. Yeah, he's a, he's a pretty nice guy. I disagree with him, but uh, Jeb Bush, uh, Johnny Isaacson, any, any number, uh, Lindsey Graham. I've all known him, talked to him, and everything. Uh, I, I, they seem much both. more reasonable off camera. Yeah, I think so. I agree. So well, Chris you, Christie's as a matter of, of fact. No, I'm the same off camera. Yeah, actually, I'm pretty good. <laughs> and do you, wait, wait, uh, are there I, any Democrats I, you Can you I like? say somebody I don't just admire, I adore, is Mitch Lander, who's about to be reelected mayor, the, the mayor in of New Orleans. The mayor of New Orleans, that's your town. And 15, f seven years ago, we were 15 feet underwater. Now we're number one in the country with a little blackout at the Super Bowl, as he said, who hasn't blacked Could've out in New anything. Orleans. That's right. right so. <sighs> Mitch Landrieu. And, and you guys moved to New Orleans. Are you much happier there? I getting out of the D.C. I've story. always been happy. Why do you think we don't have just because... I read the book. That's oh. why. Oh. I, 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 I read the book. I was, I was used. And, and here's a passage. You know, you were talking about when, when he was riding high 
and, and you weren't, and you said, and while I was adjusting to life without a job and days without purpose, James was beating off. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, James was beating off endless opportunities <laughs> and accolades with a baseball well, got, that. But that's got, what it says. I, I it says it. that right there. I <laughs> got news for you. That's a book. <laughs> it says it right there. James uh, was beating off. I, I've, I've, been pretty, I, I that. I've been pretty consistently doing that for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. It preceded the marriage, <laughs> and it exceeds the marriage, and I think it's somehow that's that the testicular fortitude is tied to baldness. I think there's that, some you know, that's true. The French have a saying, fuck like a bald man. Because <laughs> it has to do with, yes. Uh, yeah, like All right, we should get out of here. Thank you very much, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. With that. Real time with Bill Maher. Ask Bill and his guests your questions right after the show at HBO.com or on Twitter.